I thank you for this wonderful church, these precious people that come week after week because they love you, Lord, and they are committed. And Father, I'm so grateful for that spirit in this house. And now, Lord, as I break the bread of life this morning, I thank you that your anointing is already on your word and already within me. And I ask that it would go forth now in Jesus' name and set the captive free. And God's people said, amen. amen and amen. Let's turn this morning to Philippians, if we can. Philippians, the fourth chapter, reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Philippians 4. Actually, I'm going to read from 8, but I want to say something first. Uh, verse 6 in Philippians says, Do not fret or have anxiety about anything. In every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests be made known unto God. And so he, Paul goes on to talk about and peace that's going to pass all understanding will be yours. But you, it will mount God over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So he's talking to the church. And he's saying these things. And then he goes, continues in verse 8. As for the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable and seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take a action, or take account rather, of these things. Fix your minds on them. Now, as we read on here in verse 9, it would seem like Paul was quite arrogant, but he really wasn't. You see, Paul knew who he was in Christ. And this is what the gospel is all about. This is what listening to the word and being taught the word is all about. So that you too will find out who you are in Christ. And walk worthy of the name of Christ. And walk in the power that Christ has endowed in the inside of you. And so Paul went on to say, practice what you have learned received and heard and seen in me. You would think he would say, now do whatever Jesus said, and I'm sure he felt that way, but that's not what he said. He said, one, practice what you have learned, number one. Practice two, not what you have received, and number three, what you have heard. Practice it. Be a doer of the word not a hearer only. And number four, practice what you've seen in me. So in other words, Paul's life was an epistle read of all men. The greatest message you can ever preach is sometimes is to say nothing. Just show the love of God. Don't talk about it. Do it. We're going to talk this morning about some benefits of a thankful heart. If you have a thankful heart, beloved, every day of your life, you should be filled with joy. Oh, but Pastor Pat, you don't know what, listen, I do know. There are many times I wake up in the morning and I don't feel like praising God. I feel like going back to bed, putting the covers off over my head and turning off the phones and saying, good night, good night. I know none of you feel that way. You all jump out of that bed. Praise Jesus, hallelujah. Now once I get up and once I realize what I have to be thankful for, and I say, no, today is the day the Lord has made. No matter how tired I feel, come on. You see, it's all about decisions. Unless you make a quality decision to win, in reality, you're not desperate enough. You have inside of you everything you will ever need to succeed. His name is Jesus. So Paul says here, Practice what you've learned, received, heard, and seen in me, and model your way of living on it. 
and the God of peace, I love how the Amplified says this, of untroubled, undisturbed well-being will be with you. Say that with me. Will be with you. Now make it personal. Will be with me. Say it again. Will be with me. Then he says, I was made very happy in the Lord that now you have revived your interest in my welfare after so long a time. You were indeed thinking of me, but you had no opportunity to show it. Not that I'm implying that I was in any personal want, for I have learned. Oh, I love this scripture. I have learned. Everyone say with me. I have learned. It's a learning experience how to be content, satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I am in. I know how to be abased and lived humbly in straitened circumstances, and I know also how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. I have learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation, whether well-fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare, or going without and being in want. Here is what he has learned, verse 13. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength in me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. It's very obvious, beloved, very, very obvious that the Apostle Paul had a very thankful and grateful heart. He knew his source. He knew his source was God and God alone. He was the one that strengthened Paul. No matter what he went through, the beatings, the shipwrecks, the prisons, no matter what hell on this earth touched his life, he knew he was only a sojourner. His eye was in heaven, not hell. Are you hearing me? He knew that that power wasn't his. It was power infused into him by God himself. Paul knew the benefits of a thankful heart. He knew no matter what was going on in his life, he would give God the praise. He would give God the thanksgiving. And every time the enemy came in, like a flood, the Lord raised a standard against him. Why? Because the scripture says the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Picking up now from where I was last week, if I can, beloved. Even when things may not appear to be going well, let's be honest. Like in Paul's life, when all hell would break loose, out of weakness... We are made strong. It's all about our attitude. It's all about our attitude determining our altitude in life. It's all about the benefits of having and experiencing and making even greater inside of you a thankful heart. Being thankful for the little things. Like this morning, I woke up. You didn't read my name in the obituary column. But you know what? Someday you will. Don't believe a word of it. She never died. You read to Patricia McKinnon, whatever, past. No. No. Don't believe a word of it. I never died. You'll not die either. We're surrounded with a great, great, great cloud of witnesses. And they're all saying, keep going, keep going, keep going. Jesus is coming soon. Oh, hallelujah. So we determine every day, as I said earlier, I don't always feel like jumping up and praising God. I'd be lying if I said that to you. I've got to take myself by the ear. You'd be amazed at how many times I talk to myself. I'm just not at the stage yet of answering myself, thank God. Are you hearing me? I'm talking to you this morning through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need to be real. 
You have to make decisions in life to praise God. You have to make decisions to walk holy. You have to make decisions to love unconditionally. You have to make decisions to forgive the one that hurt you. You're the one that has to make the decision, beloved. You see, if you don't, it's you, it's you that's going to suffer. And I said last week that worry does not take the sorrow from tomorrow. Worry takes the strength out of you for today. Grateful people have a strong belief in God and they thank him. You can read the scriptures for yourself, beloved. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of these people were men of great faith and full of thanksgiving. A strong faith in God causes Christians today to thank God no matter what they're going through. Grateful people, those with a thankful heart, depend upon God. It's easy to be thankful when, when you remember just how totally dependent upon God we are. You've got nothing without God. You don't have a breath without God. Hallelujah. Man has no room for pride or self-sufficiency since every blessing we have, whether it's spiritual or physical, mentally, whatever way, it all comes from God. You can read that in James 1.17. Grateful people remember what God has done for them. Only one of the 10 lepers, as I said last week, only one remembered his healing and returned to say thank you. To the Philippians, Paul wrote, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, Philippians 1.3. Without remembering, beloved, there is no place for thanking people if you can't remember. Grateful people have hearts filled with love. Just as pride and ego and greed and envy produce ingratitude, love produces thanksgiving. And I thought about, you know, when, when we get into this pride and greed and envy, we, we get egotistic. Ego. What is E-G-O? Egging, egging God out. When we start to feel ego and we have done this, be, listen carefully. Be very wise, beloved. You're not a self-made man or woman. God made you. Hallelujah. Grateful people take time to say thanks. It's, you see, it's an expression of gratitude, and it might consume some of your time. It's worth it just to get into the habit of saying thank you. Those who are grateful, who have thankful hearts, take the time. Take the time. Whether it's in your car or, you know, in your home, whether you're, you're cleaning or cooking or whatever you do, just thank you, Jesus. Even when you're vacuuming the, va the, 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 the carpets, thank you, Jesus. Thank you that I have a vacuum. Thank you that I can walk this house. Thank you that I have a house. Thank you I have a roof over my head. You might be sitting there saying, is this woman crazy? No, I'm not. Because I've been in places where they don't have a roof over their head. I've been in places in the world that I came back to this country and came off of the plane and kissed the ground. And Teresa, you were there and saw me. Thankful to God for America. With all of our problems, beloved, we're still the greatest country in the world. Yes, we are. Hallelujah. And I don't make light of the situations that we see and the road we're going down, but God. Grateful people find a blessing in every event of their life that they can be thankful for. After Matthew Henry, he's the one that, you know, wrote the, uh, the concordance. After Matthew Henry was robbed, he wrote the following words in his diary. Lord, let me be thankful first because I was never robbed before. Second, because although they took my money, they did not take my life. Third, because although they took my all, it was not much. And fourth, because it was I who was robbed and not I who robbed. 
Which am I? Am I grateful or am I ungrateful? You're the only one that can answer that. You and I choose every day to remember and be thankful. And if we do this, we will see the benefits of a thankful heart. You see, beloved, a thankful heart is a merry heart. It's a happy heart. And the Bible is very clear. You want to know about benefits? If you just have this one benefit, you've got all benefits. Listen what it says in Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. A merry heart is like taking a prescription three times a day. I'm gonna get that. I'm getting this just as I'm saying it. I've never thought about it before. But you go to a doctor and he gives you a prescription and he'll say to you, take this three times a day. Thank you, doctor. You go back in, in two or three weeks or two or three months or like me, two or three years, whatever. And, and he says, how are you feeling? Oh, the medicine worked fine. I'm doing great. How much more will God's medicine work? So I'm getting this as I'm saying it to you, beloved. So three times a day, before each meal, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I am so grateful. Guess what just happened inside of me? No matter what that day holds, I've made myself happy. I've said I'm blessed whether I feel it or I don't. I love this description that this verse gives. It paints a clear picture of how our heart determines our day. I want to share something with you. It was uh, not Sunday past, two weeks ago Sunday. Or was it last Sunday? It was last Sunday. Excuse me, it was last Sunday. I was coming to church. It was early in the morning. And it was a beautiful day. And that wee one, amen. <laughs> That's what that sounded like. Uh, it was a beautiful morning. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. And, and it was just gorgeous. And I was coming out of my house and I was driving to the church and I was praising God and I was saying, thank you, Lord, for this Thanksgiving season and thank you for the message that I'll bring to the people this morning. And I was just thanking them and I was happy and I was, you know, praising God. And all of a sudden, I looked down at the, at the dashboard and it says, warning, ice possible, drive with care. I looked out at the streets, they were bone dry. And the weather was like about 30, 20, I mean, 40 degrees or something. It was warm. Well, I mean, warmer than most winters. And I started to laugh. And I found myself talking to the car. And I said, car, you know what? You don't have a clue what I says. And I'm laughing and laughing and laughing. And by the time I came in here, guess what? I felt great. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But isn't that just like the Lord? You're going along and you're having a great day. And all of a sudden, caution, ice possible, drive with care. You can fill in the blanks. You need to get out of that. And say, you know what? I love Jesus. And no matter how much ice comes or problems comes, he'll take care of me. Oh, hallelujah. So when we hear the word medicine, we usually imagine something that brings healing. It's something that will resolve a problem. We, maybe a problem that we've been dealing with. And in the same sense, this verse I just quoted to you tells us that a merry heart can bring healing. I didn't make this up. It's in the Bible. Regardless of your struggles, you can still choose, beloved, to be happy. Negativity may surround you, most likely is surrounding all of us. You only have to turn on the television, and you'll hear all the negativity you need to hear. 
But you get to decide, decide whether all of those voices are going to defeat you. Notice how it says in Proverbs, a broken spirit dries the bones. The devil would love nothing better than for you to sink into depression. You know why? He enjoys it so much because he knows that you were created in the very image of God himself. And if he can get you, it's another notch, so to speak, in his belt against God. Oh, hallelujah. Beloved, it doesn't have to be this way because you can choose and ignore his lies. You can decide not to let him, not to let him dry up your spirit, not to allow him to keep you broken. You can decide that enough is enough. You can decide you're no longer going to let him steal your joy because you just found something out. The joy of the Lord is your strength. If he gets your joy, he gets your strength and he gets your goods. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Pastor Power, I want to be the way I used to be. Really? Then do what you used to do. The fastest way to do this is to reflect on all the good things that God has done for you. Start reflecting on his gift of eternal life. Start reflecting on what I read earlier to you that Paul talked about. Think in these things which are good, lovely, of a good report. All of these things are, 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 are worthy of you thinking on. And thank him. Thank God for the day you're having. No matter what you're looking at. Thank him for his favor in your life. Thank him for the people that he's placed in your life. As I said earlier, you know, I had a beautiful Thanksgiving day. And both my daughters, are, I'm telling you, they are outstanding chefs. They don't take it from mother. <laughs> but I can assure you, the food was fantastic. I couldn't move for two days. I still had leftovers. But what I'm trying to say Set aside the food. The biggest blessing was being with my family. Are you hearing me? I could have had a hot dog and been quite happy. Not quite, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so thank him for all the people that he's placed in your life. Thank him for all the victories that he has already opened the doors for you to. When you focus on all the good in your life, beloved. You can't help but have a merry heart. And when your spirit is broken, reflecting on your blessings is the best medicine. However, let's be honest with ourselves. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always be where you've always been. It's just that simple. When you change the way you look at things, the way the things you look at will change. The things you look at will change. Well, glory to God, the Holy Spirit just spoke to my heart. Said, uh, you've said all you're saying today. I'm going to continue next week because there's so much more to talk to you about. Because when you get a hold of this message in your heart, you will do what it says in 2 Peter 1.13. Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. That was the Apostle Paul's message to the church. <coughs> Sometimes I and others can get up here and we can go on and on and on. But the Lord spoke to me to end with something funny for you today. But I want to say this to you. If you can get what I've just said to this point, your life will change. But we're always looking for something new. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's new revelations in God's word every single day. 
But what I'm saying to you this morning, beloved, is practice what you've already heard, what you've already seen, what you've already, what you already know. Practice that, and then God will give you more. If you just got out of this message today to wake up tomorrow morning and three times a day take your medicine, then you got what God wanted you to hear. Are you hearing me today? Because no matter how dark the day, the dawn always comes. This story is told of the pecans in the cemetery. Some of you may have heard it, but the Lord said, say it today. On the outskirts of a small town, there was a big old pecan tree just inside the cemetery fence. One day, two boys filled up a bucket full of nuts and sat down by the tree, out of sight, and they began dividing the nuts. One for you, one for me. One for you, one for me, said one boy. Several dropped and rolled down towards the fence. Another boy came riding along the road on his bicycle, and as he passed, he thought he heard voices from inside the cemetery. He slowed down to investigate. Sure enough, he heard, one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. He just knew what it was. He jumped back on his bike and rode off just around the bend. He met an old man with a cane and he was hobbling along. Come here quick, said the boy. You won't believe what I heard. Satan and the Lord are down at the cemetery, dividing up the souls. <laughs> the man said, beat it, kid. Can't you see it's hard for me to walk? And when the boy insisted, the man hobbled slowly to the cemetery. Standing by the fence, they heard, one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. The old man whispered, boy, you've been telling me the truth. Let's see if we can see the Lord. Shaking with fear, they peered around the fence, yet were still unable to see anything. The old man and the boy gripped the wrought iron bars of the fence tighter and tighter as they tried to get a glimpse of the Lord. At last they heard, one for you, one for me, that's all. Now let go, let's go get those nuts by the fence <laughs> and we'll be done. <laughs> they say that the old man made it back to town five minutes ahead of the kid on the bike. <laughs> A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Guess what? You just had an infusion of medicine. And I hope you'll remember that. Hallelujah. Every head bowed and every eye closed. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Father, I believe that I have heard your word and I have obeyed your voice this day. And Lord God, I give you the praise. I give you the glory. I thank you and I praise you. Have your way, Lord God, in our lives this day. Have your way in our hearts this day. Have your way, Jesus. You are so, so good to all of us. And Lord, I just want to say over and over and over and over and over again, thank you for my salvation. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my mind. Thank you for your blessings of not only my natural family, but this great church family. I'm so grateful. As we bow our heads in reverence to the Lord this morning, I just ask you a question. I'm going to put two invitations out there. If you came here today, you've heard this message. And you say, it's time for me to give my life to God. I need to be a lot more thankful than I've been. And I need to 
thank him for my salvation today. And you've never said, Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, I want you to be in control of my life. I'm asking you to be my savior this day. That's it, invitation one, invitation two. You are a Christian. And you, like myself and many, many others, have allowed the cares of the world many times to choke the word of God in your life. The cares of the world to take your joy. The situations that arise in all of our lives, the dark night of the souls. You know what I'm talking about. And you're saying today, I haven't been as grateful as I should have been, Pastor. I need to thank God more. I need to truly repent today because I have so much to be thankful for and I don't give them the time of day to even do it. So if you can say yes to either of those invitations, I want you to, to show God your hand. I'm asking you just to put it up and back down again, if you would, all over this place. God bless you. So many hands, so many hands. God bless you. Back down again. God bless you. If you gave your life to Christ this morning, if for the first time you raised your hand and said, I want to know Jesus, I would like you to put your hand back up again. I'm not going to ask you to come down here. I just want to see who you are. I want to make sure that we pray the prayer. I see your hand. God bless you. Anyone else that would say, I've never given my life to Christ and I need to do it today. One's already raised their hand. God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you, Father. I think I saw a hand there. Yes, thank you. God bless you. Well, let's pray this prayer together for salvation, beloved. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the sacrifice he made. Today, I repent of my sins and I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life. Today, I want you and I thank you for it. And now if you are as Christians in this place today, would you say this with me? Lord Jesus, I know I haven't always been thankful and you have seen my heart. And today, I need your help. Just keep reminding me of all my blessings. And I thank you that I will have a thankful heart. I will have a, have a healthy heart. And I will give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's stand to our feet, beloved. God bless you.